This is a tutorial on greatest common factors and prime factorization. The first thing we're going to talk about are what factors are. If we have a number 24, we can get 24 by multiplying 1 and 24, or 2 and 12, or 3 and 8, or 4 and 6, or 2 times 2 times 6, or 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. We can get 24 by multiplying all these numbers together, and that means that these numbers are all factors of 24. So 24 is a factor of 24, 2 is a factor of 24, 12 is a factor of 24. Notice factors are all whole numbers or whole integers. Now lastly, let's look at this last set of numbers that we have here, this 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. This is called the prime factorization of 24 because these are all the factors of 24 and these factors don't have any factors of their own. So these are all prime numbers. We can't get any factors. So if we had 12 here, we could factor 12 into 6 times 2 and then we can factor 6 into 3 times 3. So 12 is not a prime factor, but 2 and 3 are. So if you're asked to get the prime factorization of a number, in this case 24, then you have to find all the factors that are prime numbers, or numbers that can't be divisible by any other number except itself. So if we have the number 90 here, our prime factorization would be 2 times 5 times 3 times 3. And an easy way to get your prime factorization is to build a factor tree. So if I have 90, I can get 90 by factoring into 45 and 2, because 45 times 2 would be 90. Now notice 2 is a prime factor, but 45 is not, so we can put 45 into 5 times 9. Now 5 is a prime factor, but 9 is not, so we can further factor 9 into 3 times 3. Now 3 and 3 are both prime factors and every branch of my tree has now ended in a prime factor so I found all the prime factors of 90 which in this case are 2, 5, 3, and 3. 2, 5, 3, and 3. So now that we know what factors are let's try factoring these two numbers. Let's find all the factors of 70. Well I can get 70 by multiplying 70 and 1 35 and 2, 5 and 14, and 7 and 10. And then if we wanted to find the prime factorization of 70, well I can split 70 into 35 and 2. 2 is a prime factor, but 35 is not. So we can split 35 into 7 and 5, and 7 and 5 are both prime factors. So our prime factorization of 70 would be 2 times 7 times 5. Now notice that all of these factors that we found before, except for the 1, can all be found by multiplying some of these factors together. Our 35 comes from multiplying our prime factors of 7 times 5. The 14 comes from multiplying our prime factors of 7 and 2. So if you can't find any of your factors of a number, but you can find your prime factorization, then you can find the rest of your factors from your prime factorization. So let's factor 81 down to its prime factorization. Well 81 comes from 9 times 9. Now neither of these are prime factors, but 9 comes from 3 times 3, and the other 9 will come from 3 times 3 as well. So our prime factorization then would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That means our factors, other than 1 and 81, would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, or 27. We'd also get it from 9 times 9, which we already knew. And those are all of our factors of 81. Well, now that we know how to factor numbers, let's talk about our greatest common factor. A greatest common factor is between two numbers and it's just the greatest or the largest factor that these two numbers share. So if I wanted to find the greatest common factor of 50 and 15, I would have to find all the factors of 50 and 15. Now my factors of 50 
are 50 and 1, 25 and 2, 10 and 5, and that's all the factors of 50. Now our factors of 15, well those would be 1 and 15, and 3 and 5. So now you just have to find the largest factor that's shared between both of these. Well, 1 is shared, but that's never the largest. 15 is not shared, 3 is not shared, but 5 is. So our greatest common factor for these two numbers would be 5. Another way to do this is to find the prime factorization of both numbers. So if we have 27 and 135, we would want to find the prime factorization of both. Now our prime factorization of 27, well, we can get 27 from 9 times 3. 3 is a prime factor, but 9 is not. So we'd have 3 and 3 for the 9. So our prime factorization of 27 would be 3 times 3 times 3. Now our prime factorization of 135, well, we can get 135 by multiplying 27 times 5. Now 5 is a prime factor, but 27 is not. We get 27 from 9 times 3. Then we get 9 from 3 times 3. So my prime factorization of 135 would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 5. Now to find the greatest common factor this way, you would write the prime factorizations of both numbers. Say so you have 27 and 135. Now 27 is equal to 3 times 3 times 3. And 135 is equal to 3 times 3 times 3 times 5. So now you have to look at all the common prime factors that you have in both numbers. In this case, they share a 3, and they also share a second 3, and they also share a third 3. But they don't share a 5 or any other number. So the fact that these all share 3, 3 times, that would mean our greatest common factor would be 3 times 3 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, and times 3 again would be 27. So our greatest common factor of these two numbers is 27. Now lastly, let's talk about finding the greatest common factor of monomials. And basically, the idea here is that you can find the greatest common factor of terms with variables in them. Here I have 10x to the fourth and 20, and I want to find the greatest common factor of both of these. Well, my factors of 10x to the fourth would be 2 times 5 times x times x times x times x. This will give me 10x to the fourth. And my factors of 20, well, I can get that from 2 times 5 times 2. Because 2 times 5 would be 10, and times 2 again would be 20. So these are my prime factors of 20. Now, what do we have in common here? We have a 2 and a 5 and a 2 and a 5. But that's all that's in common with these two numbers. So our greatest common factor with these two numbers would be 2 times 5 or 10. So my greatest common factor between 10x to the fourth and 20 is 10. Now let's look at our next expression here. We have 36x cubed and 24x squared. Well I can get 36x cubed by multiplying 36 times x times x times x. And 36 can be broken down into 6 times 6. And 6 can be broken down into 3 times 2. So my prime factorization of 36x cubed would be 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times x times x times x. Now if I find my prime factorization of 24x squared, I can break this down into 24 times x times x. And 24 can be broken down into 6 times 4. 6 can be broken down into 3 times 2. And 4 can be broken down into 2 times 2. So my prime factorization of 24 would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times x times x. Now let's look and see what we have in common here. We have a 2 
We also have another 2. We also have a 3 in common with these two numbers. And we have an x in common with these two numbers and another x in common with these two numbers. So my greatest common factor then would be a 2 times 2 times 3 times x times x. Well, 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 would be 12 and then times x times x would be x squared. So my greatest common factor of 36x cubed and 24x squared would be 12x squared. So notice our greatest common factor has a variable in it. Well, if I have x cubed and an x squared, and I wanted to find my greatest common factor, well, then my greatest common factor would include the lowest number of x's in it, in this case, x squared. So remember that greatest common factors can also include variables. And that concludes the tutorial on greatest common factors and prime factorization.